The airspace covering the communications and combat zones is a busy and constricted area. In addition to enemy air activity, other elements which can be expected to be active in this airspace, and especially over the combat zone, include aircraft on counter air, air interdiction, and offensive air support missions, aircraft in transit to and undertaking close air support operations, helicopters engaging in air mobile, resupply, and anti-armor operations, tactical air transport aircraft employed in airborne or air landed, air logistics support, and casualty evacuations operations. Drones and remotely piloted vehicles on target acquisition and surveillance missions. Gun and rocket artillery engaged in indirect fire missions. And various types of air defense weapon systems. The airspace control system has been designed to function in conjunction with these numerous concurrent activities. The theater air commander is designated as the airspace control authority and given the overall responsibility for the planning, organization, and operation of the airspace control system. Exactly, sir. Let me get this up on the board. He implements the system through the airspace coordination center, which is jointly manned by Army and Air Force staffs. Okay, uh... Tango, uh... The airspace control system consists of a number of coordination and control agencies, several early warning and control radars, with their associated communication networks, surveillance and identification resources, and control procedures. Control and coordination elements are linked with each other and with the airspace control authority by communications and procedures to form an integrated system. The purpose of the airspace control system is to identify aircraft through procedural or electronic means to alert the defenses when aircraft are identified as hostile, to control and coordinate all air defense resources, and to prevent the destruction of friendly aircraft. The Airspace Control Authority plans, organizes, and operates the airspace control system through the fire support coordination centers established at each level of command. In addition, Land and aviation commanders have a requirement to operate aircraft, command, surveillance, and weapon systems within their area of the combat zone, and they participate in airspace usage planning through their associated FSCC. Airspace coordination in the combat zone generally involves processing requests for the temporary use of airspace, coordinating artillery and air defense fire, with offensive air support missions and tactical aviation activities, and ensuring subordinate formations comply with current airspace control measures. We have uh, 54 aircraft available. Corps and division commanders coordinate overall control parameters of the Air Commander's airspace coordination orders. The division artillery commander is responsible for airspace coordination within the division area. This function is normally delegated to the supporting air defense commander. The Fire Support Coordination Center is the primary airspace coordinating agency, involving its artillery operations, air defense, air and aviation cells. The FSCC's specific airspace coordination functions are to correlate information and data and resolve potential airspace usage conflicts to maintain an airspace usage map and keep informed on the current status of the air defense and aviation activities. To maintain and disseminate current information on all defended and restricted areas, air corridors and air traffic control zones, on prearranged indirect fire missions, on any major aviation operations, on all pre-planned offensive air support missions and on any information concerning enemy air and air defense activity and to relay information concerning air defense warnings, weapons control orders, rules of engagement and identification criteria within the division's area. 
Jerry. An airspace coordination center may be established within the division FSCC on an as-required basis to coordinate aircraft movement and provide for timely target identification and engagement. Airspace control and coordination is normally achieved by a combination of procedural and positive control measures. Procedural control is restrictive in nature and consists of measures which are promulgated in various plans, directives, and SOPs by the Airspace Control Authority. These measures include areas and zones, air corridors, temporary restrictions, and other regulating directives, which are designed to prevent or minimize interference among users. Airspace control area and sub-areas are the basic geographical elements contained within the operational commander's area of responsibility, wherein control is provided as an integrated system by the ACA to meet the needs of all users. A high-density airspace control zone is established when an intense ground operation is planned or taking place. Its size is kept as small as possible, and friendly air activity within the zone is limited to aircraft tasked to operate in the area. A restricted operations area reserves airspace to suit a particular operational need. These areas include airdrop areas and weapons engagement zones. Requests to activate an ROA are made by any commander through their respective FSCC to the Airspace Control Authority. A weapons free zone is a temporary airspace restriction around a critical asset which merits special air defense protection. All friendly aircraft must avoid a WFZ unless prior approval has been obtained from the designated controlling authority. Base defense zones are controlled areas around airfields used to enhance the effectiveness of their ground-based air defense weapons. A low-level transit route is a temporary corridor of defined dimensions passing through areas containing short-range air defense weapons. Use of these routes reduces the risk to friendly aircraft and minimizes the weapons-free constraints throughout the area. Air routes are used in the communication zone for the movement of reinforcement and resupply flights through the rear area air defense systems. Transit corridors are established to route friendly aircraft through air defenses in the communication zone and to provide a means for aircraft to transit into the forward area where they link up with the low-level transit routes. Special corridors are similar to, but much larger than, the LLTRs. They facilitate the passage of large aircraft formations, allow greater navigational tolerance in bad weather, and minimize risk to friendly aircraft at medium and high levels. Time slots denote a period during which air defense systems are restrained to permit other users greater freedom of operation. Altitude and airspeed control signifies a defined height and speed band within which aircraft may fly it normally functions as a supplement to other forms of identification and is used in conjunction with other parameters. A traverse level is the vertical displacement above a short-range air defense weapon system. Here, an aircraft can cross the area when it is unable to obtain direct clearance from the air defense system or when it cannot comply with other recovery or transit procedures. Coordination level is a height above and below which Air Force and Army control traffic must be coordinated with each other's agencies. This coordination is required to minimize the risk of collision between fast and slow-moving air traffic. Restricted arcs result in areas in which the fire of an individual Shorad weapon is curtailed to a weapon's tight or weapon's hold status. In addition to the above restrictive measures, Corps and division agencies may establish airspace coordination areas, which allow the simultaneous attack of targets near each other, normally by multiple fire support means. 
An ACA prevents conflict between artillery and air traffic by having artillery fire cease at a specified time or on the happening of some event. By keeping aircraft clear of the trajectory of artillery rounds or rockets. By separating targets. And by a geographical feature. Is there any air defense uh, installations protecting that that you know of? Informal ACAs may be established at brigade and battle group levels, which greatly simplify the coordination function. These involve assigning individual sectors for fighter and artillery operations, which are laterally separated by a restricted maneuver area. An altitude restriction for fighters operating above a restricted maneuver area, the limits of which are determined by the shell's trajectory and the gun barrel line. A time separation, which allows fighters and artillery to share the airspace over a restricted maneuver area. And designating separate sectors with maximum aircraft and minimum trajectory altitudes to enable continuous attack of targets. Positive control is a minute-to-minute -minute activity, which relies on real-time data to achieve aircraft identification, tracking, and routing. This type of control is particularly difficult within the forward area of the combat zone due to the speed and intensity of activities and the lack of electronic control devices for short-range air defense oh. weapon systems. Positive control is assisted by high to medium level air defense weapon systems which generally have a built-in electronic identification and tracking capability and the associated command and control communications. Positive control may become unworkable due to the volume of individual activities, limitations of radar coverage, failure of navigation, communications, or identification systems, or because of enemy attack. Should any of these situations arise, procedural control measures will be adopted to supplement the deficiency. The routine coordination of airspace control activities is assisted by temporary airspace restrictions which are imposed in response to a commander's operational needs. Brigades and divisions forward any required changes to these restrictions to the airspace control authority in the form of airspace control requests. Once approved, they are promulgated on a daily basis through an airspace control order. Airspace management is a complex activity with great potential for user confusion and conflict. Full positive control is flexible and highly desirable, but is equipment intensive. Procedural control depends less on equipment, but imposes many more restrictions on all airspace users. Control measures do, however, promote the safe and timely use of the forward airspace and assist with the flexibility of close air support operations.